A federal high court in Abuja has stopped the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission from retrying a former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzo Kalu, who was earlier convicted of 7.1 billion naira fraud. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, gunmen have murdered Dr. Chike Akunyile, the widower of the late Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, Dora Akunyile. Chike was killed on Monday at Nkpo in the Demili North local government area of Anambra State, alongside seven other persons. It was gathered that Dr. Akunyili was returning from a trip to Onicha, where he had gone to obtain a posthumous award of excellence for his late wife when he ran into the hoodlums at Nkpo and was shot and killed. It was also gathered that the assailants were chanting no election in Anambra in November. At number 9, the House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the viral security advisory pamphlets of the National Youth Service Corps, which emerged online some days ago. The handbook, entitled Security Awareness and Education Handbook for Corps Members and Staff, listed some high-risk routes. The said handbook also suggested that Corps Members and their families should have a ransom amount on standby in the event of kidnap. NYC had initially denied the existence of the pamphlet, describing the report as fake, but the call later admitted the existence of the pamphlet and announced the commencement of investigation into the pamphlet. The House of Representatives resolved to investigate the matter following a motion moved by the minority leader of the House, Ndudi Elumelu, on Tuesday. Elumelu said the inclusion of the said section shows a complete collapse in the architectural system of the country's security forces and a major worry for friends and family as to why their children should be allowed to participate in this compulsory exercise. Reacting to the motion, the Speaker of the House, Femi Godabia Miller, had initially said since the NYC already denied the bill, hence no need for investigation. But after Elumelu presented a copy of the pamphlet obtained from NYC, the House consequently resolved to mandate the House Committee on Youth Development to investigate the matter and also ensure that adequate measures are put in place to provide safety for core members across the country. At number 8, operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps Anambra State Command have arrested four suspects with 90,000 liters of adulterated petroleum products in two trucks along the Onicha Oweri Expressway in Hiala. The newly appointed NSCDC State Commandant, Everestus Obio, made this known on Tuesday during a news briefing with journalists. Obio said findings revealed that the suspects were not licensed to deal in petroleum products, while the trucks used had no permit for the conveyance of the product. The commandant said Mohamed Nuradin, Sani Zubaru, Abdullah Ilawal and Suleiman Mohammed all confessed their various roles in the crime and that investigation was ongoing after which the suspects will be charged to court. At number 7, bandits attacked Gatawa, a village in Sabon Bini local government area of Sokoto State, on Tuesday night, killing at least 20 people and abducting several others. The community was said to be one of the few secure villages in the eastern part of the state where bandits have been very active. A local resident, Bashar Gobiru, told newsmen that his younger sister was among those kidnapped. Another source who wished to be anonymous said the bandits came on motorcycles as usual and started shooting sporadically. They went from house to house checking for food and other things, but they also killed 20 people during the attack. At number 6, cholera has killed 2,791 persons in 28 states and the Federal Capital Territory since the beginning of 2021. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control revealed this in a situation report released on Tuesday. NCDC said a total of 81,413 suspected cases were recorded within the period. The affected states are Adamawa, Bauchi, Bayelsa, Benue, Bonu, Cross River, Delta, Ekiti, Enugu, FCT, Gombe, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kanu, Katsina, Kebi, Kogi, Kwara, Nasarawa, Niger, Ogun, Oshun, Plateau, Sokoto, Taraba, Yobe, Rivers, and Zamfara. At number five, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has arrested no fewer than 24 hawkers and retailers of unregistered sex enhancing herbal medicines in Sokoto State. NAVDA coordinator in Sokoto, Garba Adamu, who disclosed this on Wednesday, said the agency also impounded six vehicles and public address systems used in selling the products and some counterfeit medicines. Adamu added that the consignments valued at about 2 million naira were seized in markets and on the streets of Sokoto Metropolis. 
The coordinator said the items confiscated would be subjected to tests and persons involved would be sanctioned to serve as a deterrent to other peddlers. At number four, Najla Romdain has been appointed as Tunisia's Prime Minister, making her the first woman to hold the position. Romdain's appointment was contained in a statement from the presidency on Wednesday. She was tasked with forming a government as quickly as possible to put an end to the corruption and chaos that have spread throughout many state institutions. Romdain is a university engineering professor and coordinator of programs at the World Bank in the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. At number three, Kaduna State Governor Naseo El Rufai has hinted that the state government may shut down telecommunication services soon. While speaking with some radio stations, El Rufai said security agents are prepared to launch an offensive on bandits taking refuge in some parts of the state and therefore asked residents to prepare for a shutdown of telecommunication services in the state. He noted that the shutdown would not cover the entire state and that only local government areas bordering the troubled Zamfara and Katsina states where military onslaught is ongoing will be affected. The governor said he had already written to the federal government regarding the shutdown, which he said had been approved by President Muhammad Buhari. At number two, the governor of Oyo State, Shai Makinde, has presented a budget of 294.5 billion naira to the state House of Assembly for the 2022 fiscal year. The governor presented the budget on Wednesday, September 29th. While presenting the budget, tagged Budget of Growth and Opportunities, Mark Inde noted that the focus of his administration is to move the state forward from poverty to prosperity. At number one, a federal high court in Abuja has stopped the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission from retrying a former governor of Abia State, Oji Kalu, who was earlier convicted of 7.1 billion naira fraud. The restraining order was given by Justice Ian Ekwo of the federal high court. Kalu, who is a serving senator, was sentenced to 12 years in prison on May 8, 2020. The former governor had gotten out of prison based on the Apex Bank's judgment, but he quickly filed an application before the Federal High Court in Abuja to stop his retrial. Ruling on the application on Wednesday, Justice Ian Ekwa granted Kalu's request. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.